Hey, so back with you for another video today. So I've just realized uh, Tesla seem to be dishing out free trials of the navigate on autopilot function. And I checked my app today and I've got the summon feature within my app, which is how you tell. I didn't seem to get an email, which is weird. And we've got navigate on autopilot available in the back end of your Tesla system. So we're driving to see our friends, um, which are about 20, 30 minutes away. So I'm gonna try the navigate on autopilot and just see how it is. Is it worth the upgrade? I wasn't thinking about it, but now we've got this little trial. Uh, it's gonna let me test it out and see if it's any good. Okay, so we've just been to the supermarket and now we have put in our destination. Uh, and as you can see here, it now says navigate on autopilot. So I'm just gonna activate that. And what that will do is when you activate your normal autopilot, it will then change it to navigate on autopilot where possible. Now, as far as I can see from other videos online, you can't use navigate on autopilot for kind of regular uh, towns and, and sort of regular streets. It will only work on dual carriageways and motorways and things like that. So um, I'll get back to you in a bit. We're gonna be on the motorway in about five or 10 minutes. So I'll keep you updated and we'll see how it does on the motorway. So as I've mentioned, it won't work on kind of city streets yet, but we're now about to get on the M60 northbound. So we'll do a little test and see how well this works. So we're now about to enter the motorway any second. And I'm gonna turn it on as soon as I can, to be honest. Now the M60 here, it's a very, very busy part of the M60. It's tricky even if you're, you know, even if you're driving. So uh, I'll be surprised if this works really, really well. Okay, so we are now on the motorway. Literally, now going to turn it on. Let's just turn the indicator off. Okay, so double tap. You can see it's already starting, wants to indicate there. So I'm gonna indicate this lane change. No, we're coming over it's done that lane change for us so i'm not actually steering now i've got my hand on the steering wheel and that's all instantly trying to take us back which is a bit weird so i'm indicating left again so you don't actually have to steer at all but you do have to tap the indicator down left and right which uh is a bit weird because you kind of want it to be fully automatic if, if you've got to keep your hand on the steering wheel and then indicate almost might as well do yourself. So it's literally just taking me onto the right lane, onto the left, and it's now trying to take me onto the right lane again. But there is, there is a car on my right hand side, so I don't know if this is gonna do it. It's canceled that out. As I say, this is a very busy part. I'm just gonna pull this out myself. I think I do need to be in this lane, I'm not really sure. I oh, know it's saying to be on the left lane. So already it's not working particularly well. Let's just go back again. back into navigate on autopilot. My foot is off the accelerator. And you know if you're on navigate on autopilot, by the way, if you're on normal autopilot, you'll have two blue lines. If you're on navigate on autopilot, you'll have the one thin line. So it's trying to get me to go into the right-hand lane, even though we need to be in the left-hand lane, which is a little bit confusing. I'm not already a big fan of this, because if you weren't familiar with Manchester or this area, you would have just pulled over then and you'd it'd be almost impossible to get back into that lane. It's trying to do it again for me and I need to be in the left hand lane. So I'm just going to ignore it. Now I think it's obviously I'm going fairly slow. But um, it's strange that it wants me to get into that, left, that right hand lane to be honest. So again I'm not accelerating. I am hovering my foot over the accelerator. Now again, I know that I need to be in the left-hand lane because this switches over to Bolton in a moment. Uh, I'm gonna just see what it does here. I'm gonna put it into the right-hand lane. Oh shit, there's a car there. I'm just taking it out just in case. Okay. So, there's a car quite coming up close to me as you can see here on the screen. Okay, I'm now gonna indicate. The car's now pulling over. Okay, it's done that, so uh, it's picking up the speed a little bit. And uh, as I say, I'm not steering, accelerating or braking. to get past. 
almost have to pay more attention with this navigate on autopilot just instantly for, for you know through using it i'm finding that it's a little bit more stressful than normal autopilot because on autopilot i know i might want to stay in this lane for a bit i tap that on uh, and then we stay in this center lane until i'm ready to move left and then i'll switch over i'm just going to go just past this car here and see what happens i want to see if it sees this gap and tries to pull me off into the left hand lane or if it's just going to keep me going obviously this is a beta feature so I don't want to slam it too much but um, I just think if you're spending that three or six thousand pounds for the enhanced autopilot or the full self-drive you know it's a lot of money and if it doesn't do what it says it should do then you're really gonna feel like you waste your money so I wanted to do this video whilst I had the trial, so you can get an idea of how it's gonna work for you. Now this road we're on now is a kind of a newly laid road. It's, the markings are very, very clear, so you'd expect it to work well. But of course, if I was in normal autopilot, I would be driving around this like I'm doing now, fine. It's really, really when we're gonna to have to change lanes or, or take a turn, our next turn's in 15 miles. So um, I'll keep it running uh, and I'll get back to you in a bit if anything happens. no one on my left hand side and this really should be taking me into the left hand lane I shouldn't be floating here in the middle lane um, it's technically I'm not sure if it's illegal but it's definitely frowned upon oh here we go it's now doing it so let's see what happens okay it's taking us into the left hand lane that's good but again I mean if this was me doing driving manually I know there's a junction here so I'm just gonna take it into the center lane because you know here in the UK you kind of you want to give people um, the ability to come onto the motorway so you don't want to be sitting in that left hand lane at those sort of junctions you, you pull over to the middle and then you go back so the car doesn't seem to be aware of that you know people have asked about holding the steering wheel is it a bit annoying you know if you do have to give it a little tug every 15 or 20 seconds not really, because you, you'll find some places on your steering wheel you, where, you, just like this, where you can rest your hand and just that, that natural resistance that your hand will have against the steering wheel will actually stop it, stop it going off. Uh, the other thing you can do is also scroll the wheel a little bit or just rest your hand on the top of the steering wheel. And um, as long as there's a slight bit of resistance, you won't see that message keep popping up. It's only if you like fully let go of your steering wheel, you'll just wanna know that you're still awake and still able to take over should anything happen. Okay, so this is now our main turn off here. Oh, here. Jesus. It's trying to pull me in a little bit, but there's a car there, so I don't know if it's going to try and get me past this car and into here, but I do need to be off in this left lane here. Come on. Navigating autopilot. 
the amount of time so far on this small journey where it's asked me to indicate into a lane, you get into that lane and then it asks you to go back to the, the lane you were just in. It's a little bit frustrating because you know as a driver roughly what's going to happen ahead or how busy the traffic's looking. So you would maybe stay in a slow lane um, or you'd maybe stay in the outside lane if it's looking a bit chock-a-block on the left. So um, again, it's telling me to go to the right lane, so I'm going to do that. But yeah, there's been a few times so far on this journey where I've pulled out to the right-hand lane and the second I've got into it, it's asked me to pull back left or vice versa. So um, yeah, you do. You, you almost have to pay more attention using, so see, look, I've just pulled into this lane haven't overtaken anyone and it's now asking me to pull back into this lane so literally that was what 30 seconds absolutely pointless um, the, the distance has been about the same between the, the vehicles in front it's maybe pulled off a little bit that amount of bike but you know it's really just wasted my time now I've had to tap the indicator twice it's pulled me to that the, you know the furthest lane the third lane and then pulled me straight back in so so far I know I'm being a bit harsh on this, but so far, navigating on autopilot, I would say it's more stressful, stressful maybe not the right word, but it's more hassle than to standard autopilot. Oh, right, okay, also we're coming up to a police B-check area here. It's 50 mile an hour signs. Is it gonna slow down for these signs? No, it hasn't, so I'm gonna take it out of autopilot just in case there are any police. So again, just something to bear in mind, you know, if you're thinking of this uh, navigate on autopilot as kind of a, a be all and end all of just getting you from A to B, it definitely doesn't seem to be that way. It still can't detect issues like this where we've just gone into a 50 mile an hour zone. Um, it, it, you know, it's still having going 70. On the screen, it's still showing a 70 as well. And I know this is Roadworks that has just popped up this weekend, but, but you would think for the money you're paying, for a system which is full navigate on autopilot. It should really do that for the price. It just doesn't seem worth it to me to spend six grand on the ability to change lanes once in a while. Because that feature itself doesn't even seem that good yet. As I say, it keeps pulling me in, taking me over. It's a, it's a little bit more of a hassle. I keep annoying some other drivers, so, you know, at the moment it's not selling this, this free trial is definitely not convincing me to, to buy it the next feature we're going to test out though um, which I'll probably cut to in a second is the summon and the parking features that you get on this on this trial if you if you went for this package okay so we've come to the supermarket car park and I was coming here to really try to see if the car could self park itself and it's really weird it doesn't seem to want to park in any of these spaces here that you can see this behind me uh, it will kind of find parallel parking spaces or parking between cars but because it's the first time I used it I thought it would be good to see if it can park in a bay and it doesn't seem to want to do that so now I'm going to try this smart summon feature so the car is just behind me here you might not be able to see it very well because there's a lot of reflection on this screen but we're just going to see if we can get the car to find us here we're not that far away from the car so we're going to hold down reverse and we're going to see if the car comes towards us so I'm holding it down, nothing's happened as yet. Just says preparing to summon, if you can see that. Summon failed. Please ensure a key is within the range of your vehicle. I'll press smart summon, so I'm gonna try that. So now we've got this one, go to target. Summon is stopping. I don't know if you have to hold it down, so let's uh, try it again. All right, press and hold to start. So go to target, so I'm holding it down. We seem to be within the radius, and let's be honest, we're not that far away from the car. Uh, I've heard in America, you can do quite a big distance, but here, it's not very far at all. So it says, summon failed. Let's go a little bit quicker, closer to the car. Obviously at this point, I think the feature's a little bit redundant because we could just walk to the car from here, but let's just see if it works. The car doesn't seem to be doing anything at the minute. Failed. I'll walk a little bit closer. So far, it's not a not a great feature. Of course, this might be good maybe if you've got a really tight parking space at home or, or a really small garage. This might be quite good for getting your car in and out of the uh, garage. Just doesn't seem to want to work. So let's, let's move it a bit closer there. Try it one more time. Here we go. We're 
we're pretty close to the car as you can see behind So I've tried it three or four times there, couldn't get it to work, couldn't get the car to park at all, which is odd. So um, we're going to head back now, it's getting a bit chilly, it's just gone down to 8 degrees. So I'll try it again tomorrow, we're going to head back, we've got an hour journey back to Manchester, but a bit disappointing, parking didn't work and the summon feature didn't work either, so not too good, but we'll check it out tomorrow. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since we were in that car park. I wanted to just use auto park and summon a little bit more because I tried it a few more times after that, just couldn't get it to work at all. Uh, now what I found is that the auto park really only seems to work between cars. Um, unlike a Mercedes I've had which would park in any kind of space, um, this only seems to work between cars. And the summon feature doesn't really seem to work at all, but I have heard if you stand next to the car, you can't really summon the car, but you can walk with it and take the car with you, which seems pointless. But we're going to go to the car park and try that out and we'll show you how that works. Okay, so we've just arrived at the supermarket and what we're going to do now is try and park between two cars or try and find a parking space. So what we're going to do is look around. You can see there's a little P popped up that there and that's how you know if you've got a space. Um, there's someone just putting their shopping in there, so I don't want to use that one. So we're just going to see if we can maybe use this space here. This would be a good one if we can get it. and it's not coming up. And this is one of the frustrating things about the auto park feature is that it doesn't always find a space, even when there's clearly loads. If you pull out a little bit, you can see that there's absolutely tons of spaces here. Um, and the spaces between these cars here, because you know, you don't always want to park in the middle of two cars when you've got a completely empty car park. And that's what I found really. If, if you've got two cars that are together, then it, it sometimes finds the space but not always um, so yeah it's a little little frustrating here because I would like to maybe park here even just to test it out for you and as I say I've, as I've been using this over the last three or four days I've got it to work maybe a handful of times but as you can see it's not working let's just drive around the front of the car park and um, see if we can do it from there and then we'll move uh, and back here and do the auto, auto summon feature so Let's see if we can find one here. Again, there's quite a few spaces if you put the camera up on the right. Oh, here we go. So we've got a space here. So this is the P. So let's press start. Let's see what it does. Okay, so we're going in nicely. It's quite a big space to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's going in quite nicely. It's a little bit over the line, that side but it's pulling forward, as you can see here. It's just lining us up a little bit. And it's pulling us back, straightening us up a little. Okay, and that's not too bad. I think it could have gone back a, a little bit, but it's not too bad. Okay, so what I've seen online, the summon feature in the UK really doesn't work very well. If you're in the US or somewhere else, you can actually summon the car from the front of the shop, but it doesn't seem to work here. But what I've seen in a few videos is that you can summon the car if you're right next to it. I don't really see the point in that, but let's try it anyway. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the smart summon feature here. And it says, please monitor vehicle surroundings. And I'm right next to the car now, as you can see. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and summon it to over there to that lamppost. Okay, so I'm right next to the car. I'm going to see if we can just summon it a little bit further over there. It's a bit weird because I can't obviously see where the car is, but we're going to press go to target. Let's just clear that again. Summon, smart summon. And let's just summon the car over straight forward. There we go. So we can see the car is actually lighting up now. And the car is moving itself. This is waiting for the path to clear. And you can see the car is moving now. It's taking a little bit of time. 
Um, but I wouldn't really call this a summon feature. It's more like I'm walking the dog. Um, so other than maybe, you know, if you've got a tight garage to get into, uh, so now it says waiting for pedestrian, which is probably me. There we go, and we can see the car is moving. So, you know, maybe if you are stuck in a tight spot near your garage, uh, you know, it could be useful for that, but I can't see any use for the smart summon feature when you have to stand right next to the car. It just seems a little pointless. Okay, and it says summon complete. So as we can see there, it's a bit of a weird one. It didn't do a great job, but you can summon the car if you stand right next to it. Okay, so it's been a few days now and I'm nearly at the end of the trial of the Enhanced Autopilot. So what is my summary of this and will I be upgrading? Well, I'm gonna tell you straight off the bat, I will not be upgrading. I think it could be good in some scenarios. But there's a few reasons why I didn't really like the Enhanced Autopilot at this current stage. Now, of course, it can be updated through software and it can get better and better. But number one, I'm really happy with standard autopilot. I find it very relaxing to use. You just flick it on and you know what? It does a really great job. What I found with enhanced autopilot is that quite often around Manchester, it would always try and indicate, take me to the middle lane and then just bring me straight back again. And I'd have to indicate again, and it wouldn't overtake a car. It would just keep moving me in and out of these lanes, which was a bit frustrating. Secondly, it would leave me sitting in the middle lane when really you should pull over to the left-hand lane. So if I was driving myself, I would maybe overtake, I would drive for a bit in the center lane, but if no one's in that left-hand lane, you really, really should be over to the left. And it wasn't doing that, so I found that a little frustrating. And then thirdly, it only really works on dual carriageways and motorways at the moment. So you're not gonna get any benefit using this on a city street or, or around your town or village. So I just think for that part of it, it's, it's a little bit of added stress in a way because you're constantly looking at the car, the car's telling you what to do, and then you're checking if you can do it, and then you have to indicate and nudge the steering wheel to actually change lanes anyway. So I think I would stick with standard autopilot. I find it much more relaxing because if I'm on a motorway or a dual carriageway and I know it's clear ahead, I can just put it on and I can just sit there and kind of keep a hand on the steering wheel and relax. And if I do need to overtake, it's not really much of a hassle to indicate anyway and then take over and, and bring it back to where it was. Uh, secondly, you've got the auto park and the summon features. Now, let's start with auto park. As you could see in the first car park we went to, I couldn't get it to work at all. We did get it to work once today, but as you can see, I'm in a kind of pretty standard UK um, shopping car park, and it just doesn't work very well at parking you in tight spaces or just open spaces. It won't park you in any spaces where there aren't things around it, which is a bit frustrating. So it is good. If you are maybe a parallel parker, um, or you do panic a bit when it comes to parking in between cars, it might be an option for you, but I don't find parking that difficult, so I would probably rather do it myself, and I don't think the fact that it, that can, it can't park within bays at the moment is, is a bit of an issue for me. And then the, the summon feature. I was actually quite interested in this feature because I thought, you know, if it's a rainy day and you're in a shop, you're thinking of going back to the car with all your shopping bags, you could use the summon feature to come and pick you up from the front of the store. I thought that would be fantastic but it just doesn't work at all. You can't summon the car from more than about 10 feet away from your car, it appears. Yes, if you've got a tight garage and you wanna get in and out of the garage, I, th I think that could be very useful, but I don't have a garage. But you can't summon the car, really, at all. You can walk the car. It's like taking the, the dog for a walk on a lead. You can stand next to the car and summon it somewhere else, but why not just get in the car and drive it? So I'm happy that I've had the Enhanced Autopilot trial. I would love to get your experience because I do know a few people on some of the forums I'm on have upgraded and they're really enjoying it. For me, I just don't see that extra three to 6,000 pounds of extra value. I'm gonna be doing the speed boost, which I know a lot, of a lot of people think is a waste of money, but I'm quite looking forward to that. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a long one, but let me know in the comments below if you've got any questions.